for him. And thank God for the Echo Valley Church of God in Christ. Amen. Of all of you, amen. Thank you for joining us today. Hallelujah. For worship service. Amen. On this first Sunday, amen. August the 2nd of 2020. Amen. We thank God for being able to worship him. Amen. In the spirit of holiness. Amen. And we hope you were able to join us this morning. We have Sunday school on Zoom every Sunday morning at 9 o'clock a.m. We have a women's class and a men's class. And you're welcome to join us to hear the word of God on Sunday school. Amen. And we want to remind you, too, that we thank you for streaming on live Facebook live stream. But we're also available, amen, on YouTube. Please like. Go find us, A.B. Kojic, Echo Valley Kojic on YouTube. And like and subscribe to our YouTube channel. Amen. We have Bible study on Wednesday at 7 o'clock p.m. And prayer this Friday at 6 o'clock p.m. And this is a special Friday because every first and third Friday we get to hear an evangelistic word from the elders and from the evangelists of our church. So we will be this Friday night after prayer at 6 o'clock. There will be evangelistic night at 7 o'clock p.m. You don't want to miss it. Awesome word, awesome speaker on this Friday night on Zoom. And you're welcome. We encourage you to be there, amen, and hear the word of the Lord and be encouraged through the word of the Lord, amen. Amen. We want to say, this is the first of August. We always tell everybody happy birthday to those born in August. And we hope you have a blessed birthday. Amen. This month. Let's continue to pray for those that are on the prayer request. Continue to pray for one another. And our thought for the day, great is the Lord and greatly to be praised. And his greatness is unsearchable. That's Psalms 145.3. <laughs>
Thank God for this first Sunday, amen, of August. Praise the Lord, amen. And we are not taking anything lightly or for granted because it's the Lord's doing. Amen. It's why he is marvelous in our eyes. And for you that have your Bibles, and for you that uh, 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 are streaming on us today, wherever you are, amen. We thank God for you, and we praise and celebrate God for you today. If you that have your Bible, let us go to the book of 1 Kings. Hallelujah. I know every bit of your familiar story, amen. 1 Kings chapter 17. Beginning at verse 1 through 7. Amen. First Kings, hallelujah. Amen. Chapter 17. And uh, we're going to emphasize verses 1 through 7. For it says, And Elijah, the Tishbite, who was of the inhabitants of Gideon, said unto Ahab, As the Lord God of Israel did it, before whom I stand, there shall not be dew nor rain these years. But according to my word, and the word of the Lord came unto him, saying, Get thee hence, and turn thee eastward, and hide thyself by the brook, Cherith, that is before Jordan. And it shall be that thou shalt drink of the brook. And I have commanded the ravens to feed thee there. So he went and did according to the word of the Lord. For he went and dwelt by the brook Chirith. That is before Jordan. And then the ravens brought him bread. And flesh in the morning, and bread and flesh in the evening. And he drank of the brook. And it came to pass after a while that the brook dried up. Because there had been no rain in the land. Praise God. Amen. And for thought today. Hallelujah. I want you to tell your neighbor, what are you going to do when your brook dries up? Hallelujah. What are you going to do when your brook dries up? Hallelujah. I've had some good days. I can't even see the road, and I 
to understand that God is up to something. And you are right in the middle of it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Elijah had just announced, uh-huh, uh, that there will be no dew or rain uh, these years according to his word. Bless the Lord. Amen. And no sooner than Elijah had spoken to King Ahab and told him what thus said the Lord, then the Lord had told the prophet Elijah uh, to go and to get out of town. Hallelujah. Sometimes the Lord will tell you to move and get out of town. Hallelujah. Because he has a work for you to do. Hallelujah. Amen. And he was to go down near uh, Jericho, about 45 miles south, uh -huh, and wait on the east side of the Jordan. There's a river by the name of this brook called Cherith. I believe there was two uh, specific reasons at this time that the Lord had sent him there. And first, it was to fulfill the prophecy of God uh, in the lives of the king and also to the people of Israel. And secondly, I believe that God had sent the prophet to the brook of Cherith not uh, to uh, save his life, from the sword of King Ahab and, and Jezebel, uh, but also to strengthen him, uh, his faith in God, who is able to provide all his needs, hallelujah, in the time of this drought. Uh, uh, you got to be willing to follow the lead of the Lord. He said, I, my sheep heareth my voice, and a stranger, you will not follow me. And so he went to uh, Sherith, amen, by this brook as he was commanded. Bless the Lord. And in the midst of the drought, hallelujah, the Lord led Elijah to a small stream, uh-huh, in the rough hills of the ancient Moab, now known as Jordan. Praise God. And listen, this was God's special place for the man of God, huh? The brook Cherith. Uh, what was Cherith? Uh, what was uh, so significant here about this brook? Well, Elijah first he obeyed the word of the Lord. You got to be obedient to the voice and the word of the Lord. Hallelujah! And he went to the brook of Cherith, and when he got there, he stayed there. Hallelujah. Amen. There wasn't no internet and there was no uh, reception for, for phone and, and whatever. But God said go and he obeyed the Lord. And well, he saw the brook from uh, which he could drink some water. Uh-huh. But what was about his food? Amen. And you know this drought, amen, and it was said that it was going to be about three years. Hallelujah. And so sometimes we are scared, uh, we are fearful to leave a situation that is keeping us down. Uh huh. It keeps us down physically, it can keep us down financially, it can keep us down spiritually. Hallelujah. Because we don't want to see how the Lord will make a way for us. It doesn't see it, you can't see it. Huh? Yeah, but you got to have faith. Faith ain't something you see. If you can see it, it ain't faith. And out of obedience, you've got to serve God with faith. Because it's impossible to please Him without it. And so here in verse 4 of our text, it, he, and, it, he, and he, it, it says here, He will be at you shall drink from this brook. Hallelujah. And I have commanded the raven. He had commanded the ravens to feed you there. I wondered how, why the Lord wouldn't use an eagle or, uh, or a dove or, or uh, some other bird that has a little class. But no, the Lord used a raven, huh? a first cousin to a crow. Uh, and this raven, his mind is a scavenger. He looks for food. He is very 
very vicious. Huh? He will take the food from the pigeon and eat it himself. Huh? And so he knows how to go and get what he needs to get. So he was commanded by God to go and get bread and food and meat for the man of God. Hallelujah. Amen and amen. And sometimes uh, we, we get upset, hallelujah, when we don't have uh, everything we need. Praise God. And we fail to see the miracle. Amen. And in the little, the Lord has already provided. Hallelujah. Amen. In all things, you should give thanks. For this is the will of God concerning you. You should always want to appreciate what you have. Huh? Even if you have a car that ain't got a decent paint job, you ought to be grateful you got a car. Huh? I know a whole lot of folks who is hitchhiking and riding the bus uh, or riding the bike would easily would love to switch places with you to have a car that has got a lowly paint job. Hallelujah. Amen. Then to have one, uh, none at all. Amen. And secondly, he, uh, in verse 5, so he went and he did according to the word of God. Somebody today is not being obedient to the Lord. The Lord has given you an assignment and you're not fulfilling it uh, because you are thinking about what other folk are going to say and what other people are going to do. And, and oh, I don't know about this and that. If God said go, you go. Hallelujah. And you do what he said because he will provide for you. Amen. So whatever you have, whatever the Lord has provided you with, be thankful. Amen. You might not be having a second course meal. Amen. Every day. You might be just pushing with top ramen like the rest of us. Huh? But hey, to God be the glory. You ought to be grateful for what you have. Because there are some who don't have that. They are looking in trash cans. So you need to appreciate, amen, to celebrate the miracle that the Lord has already provided. Amen for you. And on that verse 6, the ravens, huh? Uh, they brought bread. Listen, God had commanded the raven to bring bread and meat here uh, and, uh, and uh, in the morning. Oh, look at that. He brought it in his breakfast being delivered. Hallelujah. And then he brought him, the raven was commanded to bring bread and meat in the evening. Hallelujah. It's good to have, to have your breakfast and your dinner being delivered to you. And he there by the brook where he can drink water. Amen. And sustain himself during this drought. And I want you to know you might be going through a drought situation right now. Your drought might be a lack of something. But if you wait on the Lord, if you obey God and you do what the Lord has commissioned you to do, God will supply your every need. Here, God supplies water. Uh-huh. When there was no water. Praise God. No one else had it. Look how God did it because of the obedience of the prophet down at the brook chair. Uh, God supplied bread when the bread was scarce. Hallelujah. Uh, and he also supplied meat when meat was also scarce. Uh, when your brook dries up, what are you going to do? you got to depend on the Lord. Now everything was wonderful for the man of God, Elijah. Uh, he did what the Lord had told him to do. Oh, he uh, had worked hard, and now he's enjoying the fruit of his labor. Praise God. And he did it in faithfulness. Praise God. Everyone else having a hard time, amen, because of the drought, uh, but not the man of God. See, when you obey God, when you do what the Lord has asked you to do, God will bless you. You will be blessed and you will be satisfied of what God has done. But one day, hallelujah, ah, ah, but one day the brook dried up. One day your source is going to dry up. One day there's going to come a time where that what you have been using and doing, and that job, or that, uh, that bank account, or that health, or whatever, is going to dry up and it ain't going to be available anymore. Hallelujah. So what are you going to do? And as the time passed, when no rain in sight,
excitement. The brook started to dry up. And I can imagine Elijah begin to pray, begin to pray, and say, Oh God, do not let this brook dry up, for I will die uh, of thirst out here. Uh, uh, look at that. Look at that. You start praying when things start changing. Uh, when you start not getting that check, you know, you start getting that opportunity and that availability. He began to pray and asking God, don't let the brook dry up. Don't let it dry up. He started because he was dependent on the brook more than he was dependent on God. Now look here, sometimes we forget God. We get in our complacent. We get in our comfort zone. We get in a situation where things are looking kind of tight. Everything is looking good. And so we, we, we slack up on fasting on Tuesdays and Fridays. Oh, yeah, I got a little change. I got a couple of nickels in my pocket. And we forget about fasting on Fridays. Huh? When we don't begin to read our Bible, we, we, we slack off on prayer on Fridays. And we, we slack off on Bible study. And we get this can't help it or I don't know. Or we get this memory lapse. And, oh, my goodness. But when things start getting tight, when the brooks start drying up, you don't forget to call on Jesus. Hallelujah. Ah, ah. So she forgot God and, and started depending on other things to sustain him. Hallelujah. But Elijah went to get a drink and the brook was dry. Went to no one. Hallelujah. And to make matters worse. Look at here. To make matters worse. Listen, the ravens that was commanded by God to bring bread and meat in the mornings and bread and meat in the evening did not show up. Oh, the morning, huh? They, they didn't even show up that morning uh, or even that evening. No, no food, no breakfast, no dinner. Uh, he started losing it even with the brook to dry up the water. Now he don't have no bread or meat to eat. Hallelujah. Everything that Elijah had relied upon was gone. Hallelujah. You can be in that situation today. A lot of things you've been relying on and relied upon. Uh, sometimes this pandemic could be your brook drying up to get you to start looking back to God. Huh? Never take your eyes off the Lord. He's the one that supplied your need. He's the one that put the brook there. He's the one that told him to go there. Some of you ain't obeying God. You ain't doing what the Lord tells you to do. Why? You try to use excuses. Hallelujah. To justify your uh, disobedience. Praise God. Amen. And everything he relied upon was gone. And the only one that was left was God. Hallelujah. Amen. The raven decided we're going to eat this ourselves. Uh, we ain't going to give it to the preacher. Uh, we ain't going over there. Amen. And so therefore, he was put in a position where he had to rely on the Lord. Praise God. Sometimes to, to position ourselves for a miracle. Sometimes the Lord let your brook dry up to position you. To let a circumstance come to put you in a different mindset. Uh-huh. That you can rely on the Lord because he has a plan for your life. Amen. A lot of times mishaps and things and adversity come in your life. It's not because God is upset with you. It's because he is repositioning you. Hallelujah. Too many of us have gotten too comfortable huh? uh, in our own little world, in our own little bubble, in our own box. And sometimes the Lord got to let the bottom fall out for you to turn and realize that if God don't do the do, ain't no do done. Hallelujah. And so therefore, uh, he had to reposition him. Amen. For a miracle. Look at that. We have to be willing to let God and willing to let go of what we think is the only way God is able to provide. Uh-huh. The only way not only to provide for our needs, the is the only way he can provide for whatever we are in need of. Hallelujah. And so therefore, sometimes the Lord let your brook dry up for you to look to God. 
huh? Not your nurse and not your doctor, not your job, huh? Not your your friends and neighbors or your ways boom coon. You've got to always keep your mind on the Lord. I don't care how good it gets. I don't care how high you go. You've got to keep your mind on the Lord. And if you don't, the Lord will let your brook dry up to get you to come back to reality that he is the one that you ought to look, who is the author and the finisher of your faith. Oh, bless God today. Uh-huh. Here, he even said that your job is not your soul. Huh? He even goes and says that God will change your circumstances in your life today. He will make things situation to get you to turn and look to him. Our prayer should be, do not let the brook dry up. That ain't what our prayer should be. But rather, Lord, I know that if this brook dries up, uh-huh, you will show me another way to make it. You will open up another door. You will lead and direct me in another path. The Lord said, when I put more on you, then you can make it. So allow the brook to dry up, and then you have in the mind to know that God is really uh, assigning me for another work. Hallelujah. Sometimes, uh -huh, God has another purpose for our lives. Sometimes God let things happen to get your attention to think a new way. Amen. You don't get too satisfied with what's going on and how things are coming. Amen. Amen. The Lord will let this pandemic really bring out the real you. Uh-huh. Oh, oh, yeah, I know our Sunday school lesson was talking about faith and wisdom, and everybody said, I got faith. Oh, yeah, I got a lot of pocket full. Uh, but you don't really know how much faith you got until your faith is tried. You don't know if you really have faith. You talk a lot, but you ain't saying nothing. If your faith ain't tried, you ain't don't know if it's real faith. Uh -huh. You got to have faith. Faith ain't what you see. It's hopeful. The evidence of things not seen. And the word of God said that the trying of your faith work in patience. You can't have patience unless you have gone through some trials. Uh, uh, and listen, several truths about this cherub, this brook. Uh-huh. Cherubs don't discriminate. Hallelujah. It doesn't discriminate. Everybody will experience some difficult times in their life. Listen, the word of God says that he reigns on the unjust as well as the just. Everybody is going to have to go through some struggles. Everybody is going to have to go through some hard times and some hard knocks. Hallelujah. Being on the rough side uh, of the mountain. Sometimes you're going to be stuck in the valley. Uh, don't think just because I said yes to Jesus, I supposed to ride on the flower beds of ease. The word of God said that if you reign with him, if you suffer with him, you reign with him. You need to go through, hallelujah, but you got to depend on God to get through. Oh, hallelujah, amen, amen. And Elijah was not going to be spared from this drought uh, forever. He was not going to be in that position. Amen. Where he didn't have to suffer. Because now the brook dried up. The raven stopped bringing bread. The raven also stopped bringing meat. And now he's the only thing he can do is look to God. Hallelujah. We need to start looking to God. Amen. While we're going through this pandemic, we need to be looking to God. Amen. For our sustaining and to survive. Praise God. And we're living in a world of sin. Hallelujah. And we are not immune. Uh, uh, to the effect of this universal sin. That we were born in sin, shaped in iniquity. Hallelujah. And so therefore, you are going to be affected by the sins of this world. Hallelujah. But bad things happen to good people. Yes, yes. Bad things happen to good people. But God uses those bad things uh, for an ultimate lasting good. God has a reason. Well, that he allows things to happen. He has uh, a reason when he sends you uh, to a certain place. Oh my God. And in Romans 20, it says in Romans 8 verse 28, look what it said. And we know that all things work together for good to those who love God. Uh-huh. 
and to those who are called according to his purpose. Listen, church, when your fruit dries up, huh? you got to know that it's, it, 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 it's the will of God that all things work together for good. God said, I will supply you every need. Huh? He said, whatever you need, you need to call on Jesus. This also saying to mom and I used to sing a song, if you call on Jesus, he will answer prayer. Hallelujah. And it all works for you according to his purpose. Uh, Cherub don't last forever. A lot of times we're dependent on our brook. And I told you before, your brook can be physical, it can be mental, it can be spiritual, uh, uh, financially. You, whatever you put in your heart and mind into, that can be your brook, but it don't last always. But when you are losing your job, or when you lost your health, and when things are going awry, what are you going to do when it has dried up? One day, your brook will, and the chariot could be a special friend. Hallelujah. Ain't nothing worse than having a friend or a confidant, a person you have told your secrets to, uh, a person you have spent a lot of time with, uh, and then they turn on you. Oh, my goodness. Then you had money in the bank and didn't use it wisely, but now you're hurt and you don't have it. Oh my God. And the job, oh listen, listen, there's a whole lot of folks in foul unemployment. They didn't think they were ever going to do it. They were thinking on that good job, making that good money. Oh my, they can eat what they want to eat, go where they want to go, wear what they want to wear. But they didn't they expect it now. They broke done dried up. They don't have that job. Huh? The Lord allowed this COVID to come through. And Sister COVID is making everybody change. Oh, you got to wear a mask. I don't like masks. I didn't have that in my closet. That ain't part of my wardrobe where it is now. What are you going to do when your brook dries up? What are you going to do when things ain't going to be the way it ought to be? Hallelujah. Amen. We want to know the important lesson here. Elijah didn't cry or pout when the brook dried up. He knew something. He knew God was up to something. There was something better to come. It, it was time to move on. Hallelujah. Tell your neighbor, it's time to move. Huh? It's time to move. Amen. You need to see the moving of the Lord. When you stay in your word of God and fasting and praying and staying in connection with God in that relationship, you will know when the Lord is telling you to move. Huh? You will see the moving of the Lord. And listen, the problem with cheering is that you can get real comfortable. Sometimes you can get very comfortable. I know folks that have gotten comfortable because things have been going pretty much their way. Uh huh. They were getting nice, nice uh, 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 retirement checks, and oh my God, got things paid off, and oh my goodness. But they don't really give God the glory. They don't really depend on God. This is why it's hard for a rich man to enter into the kingdom of heaven. Why? Because he's going to put more concern on his money than he is God. Huh? This is why the word says the poor you'll have always with you. I'd rather be poor and be rich in God and then be rich and don't have not a thing, a relationship with God at all. And so his book cries up. So what would you have happened if Elijah stayed there? Huh? And cried in self-pity. Praise the Lord. He surely would have died. But, uh, but the very next place God brings Elijah is, is to the widow woman in Zarephath. He told him, I want you to go down there to Zarephath. And that was, uh, uh, and, and, and now this required uh, a step of faith huh, from the man of God. After being in a very comfortable place and having everything provided, having all of the stuff broke to me, I didn't have to do nothing but just lay there and get fat. Oh, now it's all gone. And now I've been told to go down and see some widow woman and a kid uh, and do something there. God has another assignment for you. Uh, and so Zarephath wasn't just around the corner. Zarephath was the night about 90 miles uh, away. And not only did he not have to, uh, he didn't have a car, he didn't even have a donkey. He had to walk 90 miles in a drought. Uh, no food, no water, he had to go. Hallelujah. We cannot 
position ourselves for miracles by trying to wait for God to come up with something else or easier for us to do. Disobedience to the word of God kept us uh, so many from missing your blessing. Disobedience is uh, the heart of being out of the position to receive God's blessing. We cannot count uh, saying with somebody or something that the Lord provided a long time ago. You can't just rely on what it used to be in the day, back in the day. No, the move of God will move you so you can do what he wants you to do. And so what are you going to do when your brook has dried up? Proverbs 3 and 5 and 6. Huh? It says, trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not to your own understanding. And in all your ways acknowledge him and he shall direct your path. Don't cry too long about your brook being dried up. Remember the same God that has provided in the past can also provide in the future. He, he will take what? Care of us. And as we use uh, to minister to others as well. Huh? Uh, thank, we need to thank God huh, for the wonderful times we had at the brook. When you are being blessed and having transportation or having a job or having good health and money in the bank, you should be thanking God that you used to have it. You should praise God, not complain, not get all upset and be done, the Lord don't love me. I ain't going to go to church. I ain't going to pay no tithe because he did this and that. No, you got to give God glory and honor and thank him when your source, when your brook dries up. And listen here, and finally, follow where God points you. Whatever direction God has been speaking to you, some of you right now know in your heart God's been speaking to you. You've got to be obedient to God. And we must show, allow God to direct our lives, trusting his guidance as well. Huh? And we, that we follow. We will take us places we have never imagined. And he has more blessings in store for you and for me through obedience. We can choose to obey him and be blessed. Or we can choose to complain and dry up along with your brook. Father God, we thank you. We thank you. Hallelujah. We're asking that you look on us today. Some of our brooks have dried up. We need to turn to you. We're relying on it more than we are relying on you. I'm asking for forgiveness right now in the name of Jesus. There might be one right now that want to make a recommitment to God. Or you might want to accept the Lord as your personal Savior. Hallelujah. And some of us right now is going through a drop of the situation. And our work is already dry. The Lord said, I'm here. He said, I will never leave you nor forsake you. If they are desiring for the Lord, you can receive it now. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Jesus. Yes. All you have to do is go to your chat. Amen. Your comment. Give your name. Amen. Express your feelings. First Lady and I will be more than honored. Officers of the church will be so much honored to respond. Amen to you. Praise God. So we are believing God now that He will bless you. Amen. And for those that want to be a blessing to this ministry, First Lady Alex and myself are so appreciative of all of you who has been giving your gift of love and tithing and offering and seed. And you are just awesome and wonderful. And we want you to know we have been praying for you that Lord will not let you name.